Hey everyone, it's Nick. And so this week, we're going to be making a lino cut. And I thought I'd string you along for kind of the entire process that I go through. And so it all starts with a block of linoleum. I have a bunch of them that's kind of pre-cut to size. And there's a few things I need to do to prep it for printing. And so when you run your hand across the face of linoleum, you might think it's a little bit smooth, you know, it's fine. Uh, but I like to make it even smoother. And that way it's more likely to release the ink. And so we're going to do what I call shaving the linoleum. And so I'm going to take a razor blade. Uh, utility knife blades also work really good for this because those are th kind of thicker, easier to handle. And I'm going to scrape it across the surface of the linoleum. And I'm going to try and keep the razor blade perpendicular to the surface. A low down angle is not going to scrape very much of the linoleum. And I'm not really removing very much of the surface. I'm just going to kind of get some of these thin, wispy, you know, shavings up onto my razor blade but the surface when you touch it it's a lot more smooth than it was before so once i've got the whole block shaved down i'm going to stain it with some india ink and i'm going to use the speedball brand one just because i have some lying around but i also have a lot of experience with this higgins brand uh, some brands i've tried just don't really want to seep into the surface of the linoleum but these two brands i found work pretty well and so now i gotta find some subject matter and if you didn't know i like to pull inspiration from the little things in life and so taking a walk around my studio, which is my parents' basement, uh, it's covered with a bunch of plants right now uh, because it's winter. And I noticed this little guy here. He's a little withered and dying, but I feel that. Me too, plant. But that's all the inspiration I need for a piece. And so after a quick sketch, I'm gonna get to carving. And individually, you know, I feel like my pieces are a bit simplistic, but I think that's okay because when you put it together as a series as a whole, I think it starts to add up to something really nice. And so if you want to, you can check out my website and check out all the little lino cuts that I've done. And individually, they're not much, but they start to add up into a really cool narrative. When I start carving, I'm gonna start carving all these little leaves. I feel like the leaves are the midtones, and I like to kind of start with the midtones. And once I get further along in the piece, I can start adjusting the contrast balance between the different individual pieces. And so, now that I've got all my leaves cut out, it's time to start carving out all of these little branches. And so, I'm going to start by outlining everything, and then I'm going to come back in and clear out all the space in between. And I didn't realize it right now, but I just messed up. You see this little kind of area right here? This was supposed to be the tree branch, which I was going to leave about solid black uh, all the way cutting across through. Uh, but I accidentally carved it out thinking it was, you know, a small thin branch. Sometimes you kind of just get into that hypnotic rhythm of carving. It's actually really fun to just kind of draw something out and then just mindlessly carve at it. And it'd be really cool if there was some sort of like woodblock coloring book where you can just order a block that has an image already drawn on it. And then all you do is just kind of carve out those lines. That'd be fun. But it probably couldn't be me who designed it because I kind of hate drawing. And I don't think I could really come up with a cool design uh, that would be fun to carve. My style of making art is just kind of drawing a, a rough kind of roadmap of where things are and then I really like to make things up as I go. I think that's just kind of the most fun way for me to go about it. I think I've made just so many lino cuts that my brain just kind of thinks in a reductive fashion right now. I'm not very into drawing. And so it was about at this point where I realized my mistake and so I'm just going to kind of divert this uh, little branch instead of going from where it used to go. We're going to send it off to the side a little bit. That's about the best I can do. And sometimes you got to roll with the punches, you know. Sometimes you carve off a spot you didn't mean to carve. Uh, you're just going to have to work around it. And so one of the downsides of shaving your linoleum is that your drawings don't quite stick to it as well. And so you're going to have to touch up that drawing uh, every now and then. Or you could spray it with some uh, spray fixative, uh, the same you would do for drawings. That also works really well. But... I didn't really feel like it because, I don't know, that feels like too much commitment to a singular drawing. I like to edit my drawings on the fly sometimes by wiping away areas, erasing and stuff like that. And so now we're approaching the home stretch. This carving is pretty much done. I'm just going to kind of come back in and shave off some of those high peaks so I don't get any chatter marks. And then it's time to print. So I found this little ball of ink and I think it's left over from that wood engraving that I printed. I'm not quite sure, but I guess we're going to use it. And so 
My inks are usually a mix of Tom Huck's Outlaw Black with a little bit of Gamblin Titanium White. Uh, I usually find that it's a nice black, but not too black. And then I add a little bit of tack reducer. And since I wanted to color, I'm going to print every now and then, like lots of vinyl cut black. I like to save the excess ink. And so some plastic wrap, uh, wax paper also works really well. I have even see people use aluminum foil, but I don't quite like the aluminum foil because I can't see what colors on the inside. Uh, don't use parchment paper because the oils will seep through that paper and it will make the outside of the paper very gross. So I'm just going to lay down a thin line, roll it out using a hard brayer, and then just ink up the block. And I tried to get some good lighting for you all so you can kind of see how when I roll over the block it kind of leaves a sort of negative on the brayer of the parts that I rolled over. I just think it's really cool to look at. Now I'm just going to do a test print with some scrap piece of newsprint just to see how it's going to look before I print the final thing. As usual, my printing paper, two pieces of newsprint, and a felt, and then it's off to the races. And so if anyone's ever wondered why my press only has two handles, uh, well, I got this press from a trade and it actually only had three handles when I got it and I didn't really want to get a fourth one machined. And so I ended up just taking off the third one and I kind of like the two handles. It's a little bit of a space, space saver when I'm not using it. And so we're going to take a look at this proof and it looks pretty good except for this little bit down here. It looks like it might be a bit low on ink uh, or maybe pressure. And so the way I test that is I just kind of take my finger and I touch it to the block and I try to see if there's a lot of ink still left on the block. And in this case, there's not very much ink left on the block, at least not enough ink that would make a difference. And so I'm thinking that it's an ink problem rather than a pressure problem. Uh, if I touch the block and there was enough ink to kind of make a solid opaque black layer on my finger, and then I would probably call it a pressure problem. And so I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more ink to my slab. It doesn't look like a little bit, but that's not very much ink. And then we're off to the races again. And so now I'm just going to set my block on the press, put down my little registration jig. Uh, I really do need to make an updated version of this. I've been using this one. It was very jankily made uh, probably like three years ago. And then I'm going to put my paper over it. Uh, I actually also need to buy more paper because I'm on my last five sheets over here. And then of course the newsprint, the felt, and then we run it back through the press. And I really like making these small little lino cuts, you know, they're nothing great, but it's really nice to have a project that's really fast that you work on in between projects. I've got a few projects working on in the background uh, that are taking a really long time, you know, weeks long projects. And then it's nice to sprinkle in some of these really fast day projects where you kind of have something tangible and done uh, by the end of the day, you know, you really get to see the fruits of your labor. Uh, come to life a lot sooner and it's just that kind of that fun factor that really keeps me in you know printmaking because if art's not fun then why are you doing it you know so here's the finished print uh you know that's not what i originally wanted with the tree branch uh, but you know i still really like it it kind of gives it now this uh all these little thin wispy little branches kind of like vines it's kind of clutching on for your life as a strong wind blows. Uh, it really feels like a struggle for it to just kind of stay here, and, you know, to exist. And I feel like that still embodies the same themes when I first thought up this print. You know, sometimes you roll with the punches and you still get something really nice out of it. But, you know, as every printmaker knows, uh, when you've printed and you get your first really nice proof, uh, that's not the end. You still got to print a few more. And so let's go ahead and do that real quickly. And I got pretty lucky with this edition. All of them came out pretty consistently, no big problems. And so all that's left is cleanup. The worst part of Edmini Project, once you've spent all of your energy slaving away in the print shop, uh, you gotta clean up. And so I start by putting my unused ink into a little piece of cling wrap. And so I usually take what wasn't rolled out. Uh, the stuff that was rolled out, I usually don't save it because it has probably bits of linoleum and dust and stuff in there. 
And so I find that it helps if I put it on the edge of a table and that way it gives you a nice surface to kind of scrape. And then I'm just gonna twist and tuck and then uh, throw it onto my shelf because I'll probably use it next week. Uh, but if I was doing color or wanted something a bit more long-term, I'd probably tape it so it stayed twisted and then label it. Next up, I'm just gonna put all of my excess used ink that I don't want anymore and I'm gonna wipe it against this uh, newsprint and so I can throw it into the trash. Uh, these Blick catalogs work pretty well for that. Uh, yellow pages also work well for that. Uh, the Blick catalogs mostly for painters and so 90% uh, of this book is useless to me anyway. And then when the going starts to get messy, I like to put on my gloves. And so anytime I use mineral spirits or solvents, it's always a good idea to wear gloves. No, it won't immediately like destroy your hands, but over time, it's not so great for you. Uh, and you don't have to wash your hands so hard at the end. And so for me, just a little bit of mineral spirits onto my slab, and then I can roll my brayer into it, and that will pretty much strip all of the ink off of the brayer. And then from there, it'll have an easy wipe down. And for the longest time, I used to use vegetable oil and 409 cleaning spray. Uh, basically, you can use vegetable oil instead of mineral spirits and it strips off all of the oil-based ink. Uh, but I like to use mineral spirits because it's a lot faster. See, this mineral spirits will do it in about, you know, there's just one rolling session. Whereas with the vegetable oil, I probably have to do that, you know, two times at the minimum to get all of the ink off of it. It's just a bit more stubborn. Uh, both work really well. And once I've got the majority of the ink off, I like to degrease it using this 409 kind of general purpose spray. And I spray onto the cloth rather than spraying onto the brayer. And I make sure to meticulously pass over the entire thing to make sure that there's no ink left. Uh, that's probably leftover ink is the worst culprit in ruining brayers early on. And so wipe that down, can't forget the handle, and then the ink knife, can't forget you know, all five sides of the blade, and of course the handle too. And so for the ink, just peel off the page, and then you can toss that. And then lastly, I've got to clean off the block. Uh, personally, I don't let the ink dry on the block because I think it gives it a bit of a texture. And of course, texture is not what I want. And so mineral spirits again to clean off the block. And then I'm going to give it a very light brushing with talc powder. Uh, you can also use baby powder. And this is basically going to absorb any of the leftover mineral spirits that are kind of sitting in the cracks of the block. And the talc isn't an absolutely necessary step since I'm not gonna print this for a while. But if I did want to print this, you know, like immediately after I clean it or in the next hour or so, then I will probably use the talc. And that's the end to this already incredibly long day. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like my content, you know, consider subscribing. I've got some cool projects planned coming up. I've ordered one of every type of linoleum that I can get my hands on. And so if you don't want to miss that, uh, stay tuned. See ya.